So everybody, let us take and talk about the TV I ended up getting after the X90L, and that is of course the LG B4. As a side note real quick, I'm watching uh, National Lampoon's Vacation, the first movie of course, and it makes me think, does anyone ever have the thought to themselves that you aspire to be Clark, you know, have a nice stable job, have a nice stable life, have a nice stable everything, uh, but as hard as you try, you sort of ended up like Cousin Eddie. So yeah, of course I took the X90L back. And while I was at the store, you know, one of my things I was thinking about, of course, is getting an OLED. Now I had the 65 inch X90L from Sony. And of course, you know, to do a recap, I was having eye strain issues and things like that. And even I went so far as to think, you know, kind of looking at other people's reviews and kind of talking to a few people, I almost want to think that maybe I had a faulty panel, uh, which was causing sort of an issue with the panel in terms of focusing, perhaps, which was causing the eye strain issues. But I digress. It is taken back, however. But anyway, while I was at the store taking it back, of course, talked to a salesperson. And, you know, I generally go into stores kind of with on my mind of what I want and what I'm going to get. And in this case, of course, I thought about getting an OLED. And to break it down, of course, we have um, some of the big players at around 1,000, particularly with the Black Friday sales going on at Best Buy, which is where I picked up these TVs. And anyway, you know, one of the players is the Samsung S85D, or is it the C? No, I think it's the D. But anyway, S85D, the S90D, uh, of course, the LG B4, uh, the Bravia 8, and of course, the LG C4. Um, now, looking at everything, you know, for one thing, Samsungs have always, at least in a store presentation aspect, they always come across as sort of unnatural looking to me. Like they'll have a demo of a movie playing or something like that, or a film or what have you. It always comes across very unnatural looking. However, you glance over to the LGs or the Sonys and everything looks much more natural looking, uh, more, um, well, more natural looking, excuse me, uh, more authentic. That's the word I was trying to find, authentic looking. Um, and so, yeah, uh, of course, you know, so that ruled out the Samsungs pretty much. And I've had some issues with Samsung TVs over the years of having their TVs. And so I kind of didn't want to go that route either. And to be honest with you, I've never actually had an LG TV, and this is truly my first one. I've had a few Sonys over the years, uh, but the majority of my televisions have always been kind of budget models from Hisense or Vizio um, or uh, budget like Sharp TVs, like those little very inexpensive ones you can buy from Walmart. Truth be said, this is actually my first uh, truly high-end television or higher-end television, put it that way. But anyway, standing in the store, obviously looking at the televisions, uh, ruled out the Samsungs, as I said, um, but you know, the LGs and the Sonys. And of course, the Bravia 8 is pretty expensive and it went beyond the cost of the X90L. And you know, I was like, no, nah, I don't wanna do that route. So that leaves the LGs. And of course, you know, they have the B4 on the bottom and the C4 above it playing the same demo. And honestly, in the store demo, I couldn't really tell much of a difference between the two. So I'm sitting there like, why spend the extra money for the C4 when the B4 is just as good, at least from my visual inspection. Now, of course, also doing the review and doing all those due diligence and that type of thing, uh, it gets huge marks. Uh, everybody basically loves this TV uh, in terms of its capability and picture quality and gaming performance and all of that stuff. And yeah, everybody absolutely is enthralled with it. And you know, one thing with the Sony, the X90L, I got the 65 inch because I thought it'd be cool to have a bigger TV. You know, if I'm gonna spend good money on a TV, let's get the bigger one, right? Um, well, in this case with the B4, I decided, well, let's save some money. Let's get that, you know, uh, money back. You know, we'll get a refund on the difference. And let's just get the smaller 48 inch. Historically, a lot of those budget TVs that I've had have always been the smaller, you know, 45, 50 inch televisions. So I'm kind of used to that size. And my sitting distance in this smaller living room, a 48, 50 inch TV makes perfect sense in here. Plus, again, I save all that extra money. It all gets refunded back to me. So, yeah.
So overall, picture quality is absolutely phenomenal. Everything from HDR to Dolby Vision content to all that type of stuff is absolutely phenomenal, really truly. It just works well, it functions great. The black levels, the contrast between light and dark is what I noticed immediately uh, when uh, switching this thing on and watching content for the first time. Uh, there are a few bugs with it here and there in terms of the software. Uh, for example, Pluto TV, which I use to watch Star Trek quite a bit, uh, has an issue where, and it's only on this app, where regardless, and I was watching Pokemon with my kids earlier, but regardless of the channel of Pluto that you're on, there is a dead pixel over here in the corner. Now, initially that kind of freaked me out until I realized the home screen, all the other apps, everything else doesn't have that issue. It's just Pluto. Um, so yeah, but yeah, like I said, the contrast was the hugest thing I noticed very, very much so, particularly when uh, viewing true 4K 60 content at HDR or Dolby Vision content. It just pops out at you. You know, one of the things people talk about in reviews of this television is, oh, it's not as bright as the C4. Well, okay, sure, maybe, I don't know. Like I said in the store demo, I couldn't really tell much of a difference in terms of brightness, and I was looking for it. But I will say, this thing gets, <laughs> you know, significantly brighter than a lot of the budget TVs that I'm used to using. This thing is, is, is literally rev revelatory. It's a revelation in terms of brightness versus those budget televisions, you know. Uh, so it's definitely a huge step up there. And then on top of that, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily get as bright as the X90L. I do think that television definitely gets brighter, but I kind of like the more mellow look of this television. Now, it kind of has a more mellow sort of look. I have it on the cinema profile with uh, the OLED backlight set down about 80. And then I've got the eye care mode, which is sort of a kind of uh, reduce the blue light kind of effect. I've got that on as well. And yeah, like I said, I've been very happy with it overall with the picture. The gaming performance has been phenomenal. I initially thought there was a little bit of lag with the gaming. So in the gaming mode, the game optimizer mode, you have the ability to set boost or standard input lag. And with boost, I was getting weird picture variations, like it would cut out, like I'm playing a game, for example. And when I went to the menu, it would like cut, like the picture would go black for a second and then the menu would pop up instead of just going to the menu. So I'm not sure what that was, but I took it off the boost and just put it on standard. And the more I played it, the more I realized it's really not an input lag issue. It's just my brain looking for a problem, that type of thing. Uh, but anyway, yeah, gaming performance is phenomenal. Uh, it really has a lot more features than the Sony in terms of like gaming customization options and things like that. It really is a phenomenal gaming TV. Uh, some people talk about eye strain in terms of OLEDs, but honestly, I haven't seen that. I've been watching this thing every day for, you know, since I got it the last few days and, you know, watching it for multiple hours a day, you know, at night I'll come home, get home at work or off of work, excuse me, and, you know, I'll put it on for three, four hours, watch a film, watch a few TV shows, play a little, you know, video games and haven't noticed any eye strain issues at all. Uh, so there's that. I did make sure to turn on that kind of blue light filter thing just to kind of kind of keep that up as well. But yeah, overall, very happy. So I know, of course, it's all personal preference, obviously. And as I said before in my other video with the X90L, you know, I'm coming at this from a newbie perspective. I'm just a standard customer. I'm not looking for perfect calibration or perfect settings or it's got to be perfect 4, 444 chroma or anything of the sort. I just want the picture to look the way I feel comfortable with it. And if I can achieve that, then I'm happy. You know what I mean? And so I'm just a normal customer, basically. I'm not, you know, one of these video files or cinephiles or anything of that type. Uh, but yeah, it works well, it functions great. Um, like I said, sometimes the interface can be a hair laggy, particularly when turning the TV on. Uh, but after, you know, interacting with it for a couple of minutes, it seems to pick right back up. Uh, that's really the only con I have. Other than that, you know, getting used to the, to this type of stuff uh, is kind of interesting, the magic remote. But you actually don't have to use it. You can just use the cursor and go through and that type of thing. It's only when you hit the center scroll wheel is when that 
pointer comes up, but again, you don't have to use it. But yeah, very happy overall and highly recommend it, particularly at the price Best Buy has these at, at $5.99. I mean, you know, I mean, it's really a no brainer and it's honestly the best TV I've ever seen. So, or the best TV I've personally owned, put it that way. Anyway, peace out and stay tuned.